you. The next words that Jesus spoke were addressed to Mary and to the other Mary. It was addressed to the women that had gone to the tomb. They had courageously finally left the upper room where all of the other disciples had gathered and they had gone out while the men remained in hiding. And they got there and Jesus tells them to go. To go and to tell the other disciples that he has in fact risen. And so we see that the first, the first ones that Jesus has commissioned to go and to share the good news are these brave women. The ones that could not in their culture at that time be rabbis. They couldn't be teachers. Uh, one of the women, Mary Magdalene, had been labeled as damaged goods. It was these that Jesus chose to be the first ones to carry out the message of the good news. And they did what they were tasked to do. They went back and they told the disciples and they said, they said, we have seen him. He is risen. And they don't believe him. Jesus told them, when you go and you see them, tell them that they, they need to leave. And they need to head to Galilee. Now Galilee, you're looking at probably a 7 to 10 day walk. And he said, go, tell them to go. And they don't. They don't leave the room. Now we don't know if, if Jesus began to show himself to them because they didn't listen and he wanted, to, he wanted to show them for himself. Or we don't know if he just himself couldn't wait. He was so excited that he couldn't wait the seven to ten days it might take for them to get to Galilee. He decided he was going to start showing up that day. And some of the first disciples that he, he shows up to, uh, they're on the road to Emmaus. It's Cleopas and an unnamed friend. And he shows up and he joins them in their journey. And in the Gospel of Luke, we read the story. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, What are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped, their faces downcast. The one named Cleopas replied, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? Jesus said to them, What things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening. And the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. 
After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road, and when he explained the scriptures for us? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. These two men, they immediately, when Jesus, it says Jesus disappeared. I'm not even sure what that would be like. But these two men, it says that they turned around and they just ran the seven miles back. And they burst into the room where the disciples were. I imagine that probably frightened the disciples because, you know, they, they're in there hiding. And they begin to tell them, they're like, it's true. It's true. What the women said was true. And, and I find that so funny. It's like, can you believe it? It's almost like, what's, what's more amazing, the fact that Jesus is alive or that the women were true? I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, it's true. He's risen. And before, and they go to tell them the whole story. And before they can even begin to share what has happened to them, the other disciples, now they're excited, and they begin to, like, they begin to talk over each other. And they're like, yeah, we know it's true because, because Peter, he's shown himself to Peter too. Have you ever been so excited and, and you, you want to tell somebody your story and then they're so excited and they want to tell you a story and you end up talking over each other? It's like that sometimes at my dinner table with my kids. And then it's funny because we'll get arguing with each other. I was talking first. No, I was talking first. And, but you're just so excited that you can't contain yourself anymore and you just want to share it. That was what was going on with those disciples in that room. They were so excited. They were talking over each other, trying to share the good news with one another. How excited are we this morning? Are we excited this morning? We're here because we believe in a risen Savior. We believe because the cross is nothing without the resurrection. And, and Paul tells us that if, if there is no resurrection, then we of all people deserve to be pitied. And if we're here this morning and we're not excited about a resurrection and we don't believe in a resurrection, then we need to be pitied because we've wasted an entire morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, be excited about your faith. Stumble over each other to share the good news. A short while after, Jesus himself shows up to them in that room. And they're scared. And I think that that's fair because we say that we love Jesus and we say that we believe in a living Savior. But let's be honest, if all of a sudden Jesus walked in and asked me for the microphone, we may be a little bit frightened. And he comes in and he looks at them and he says, Fear not. Don't be afraid. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And he sees that they're still scared. And the Gospel of John says, he says to them again because they're still frightened. He says to them, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. They were afraid. They were afraid of the Romans. They were afraid of the religious leaders. They were afraid for their lives. And Jesus shows up. And I got to tell you this morning, the circumstances did not change when Jesus shows up. They were still in an upper room. The Romans still wanted to kill them if they could. And the religious leaders still hated them. Circumstances didn't change. Perspective did. Because now what becomes more important, my fear for my life or the fact that Jesus, the Lord, is risen today. Perspective changes. Who wears the crown? 
who truly is the king. This morning, let's stand and sing. Crown him with many crowns. Let's stand.